All right, so this is a caterpillar. This is a caterpillar here. There's many like it, but this one's mine. This is also known as the Manduca sexta or the tobacco hornworm. And so the reason why they call it a horn, of course, is this little projection right here. That's the horn. Um, there's all sorts of speculation of what that horn might be involved with, but one idea maybe is a little bit of a defensive mechanism. Who knows for sure? I'd have to look it up myself. But we know that it's a Manduca sexta. Um, it has these stripes. This is a very famous looking caterpillar. You'll find this on your tomato plants, even though it's called a tobacco hornworm. Um, it loves to feed on solanaceous plants. These include plants like tomato plants and tobacco plants, um, obviously, and um, you'll find them on peppers and stuff like that. So this is just a very common plant and, um, or caterpillar. And so again, we know it's an insect because it has six true legs. The six true legs are actually on the thorax. Let me see if I can show that. So the six true legs are right underneath my fingernail. There's three on one side, and of course there'd be three on the opposite side. So those are six legs, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now they are found on the thorax. You can look at this diagram in the picture here. This is the thorax segment. That's where the true legs are located. Obviously, this is the head region up here. You can see the mandibles. That's the chewing in. And the eyes are just going to be little pin-like structures that are very, more or less just provides a little bit of information on their light. Then you'll notice, and that's not an eye. That dot there is actually a spiracle. All these little dots that you see along the side of the body are what we call spiracles. Spiracles are the um, openings that I believe can open and close for the most part. They'll close if they fall in water, for instance. Um, they allow air to enter into the insect. So there's no caterpillars that are going. <sighs> so you don't see caterpillars breathing air uh, directly through their mouths. They're breathing through these holes called spiracles. Those are all those little black dots. Now, you, as I mentioned before, the true legs are found on the thorax. And that's up here near the head. But these down here are actually pro legs that are holding on pretty good. So they work pretty good as legs, but they're actually just protrusions of the abdomen. So this is the abdomen region all the way down to the end. And then I believe this is called an anal clasper. It allows them to grab onto leaves. Like, look how good it grabs on. Once they get hold of my skin pretty well, you can see how they could hold really well if the plant's moving and, and shaking in the wind. These caterpillars will hold on nice and tight and they can hide under a leaf really efficiently too and avoid danger. The color of green will obviously help camouflage them. And if they eat on green plants, like tomato plants, these have been feeding on artificial diet. Um, it's kind of a mixture of cornmeal and various things, or well, some medium, I can't remember exactly what it is. And what we just saw there is a little bit of its poop. We call the poop of caterpillars frass. Now if they've been feeding on tomato leaf, that poop would be black. Instead, it's brown like the diet, artificial diet that it's feeding on. But we call it frass, F-A-R-A-S-S. -S. And uh, so this frassed on me. So when you talk to your parents now, you just say, hey, I need to take a frass instead. And, and we know, as scientists, will know you're talking about poop, at least from regards to insects. So if you ever have some tomato plants going, look for some black poo on the leaves, and that'll likely lead you to a caterpillar. Um, these caterpillars go through molts. I don't know if you knew that about caterpillars. Um, they'll start off as a little egg that's like the size of a pin of a needle or, and so forth. And then the egg will emerge and you'll have what you call your first instar caterpillar. And it'll be really small. And then it will go through molts where the cuticle, which is kind of like the skin of a caterpillar, will be shed. And then the caterpillar will eat it. Is it crawling all over? The caterpillar will eat that shed. 
usually. And then the head face capsule, head capsule will actually slip off. And it'll do this multiple times, about four instars. What happens is it kind of puffs itself up and will shed its old cuticle every growth stage that we call instars. And then ultimately we'll reach a pre-pupil stage where these legs will get really shrunken in, the body will shrink down and get really small and chubby and no longer very mobile like this. It'll get real shrunk down, kind of like an accordion coming in. And um, that'll be the pre-pupil stage. And then it will pupate or shell, often in the soil. And then it'll become a very beautiful moth. This becomes what you call a sphinx moth. Carolina's sphinx moth is the common name for it. Or sphingid moth. It's part of the sphingid day moths. In fact, all caterpillars um, are part of the order Lepidoptera. Hopefully, you know the kingdom, phylum, class, order. So the order is Lepidoptera. Obviously, the class is insects. So, and again, insects have six true legs. That's something else an insect. So, spider is not an insect. Um, again, this is the thorax. That's where the legs or the wings would be. Once it goes through a complete metamorphosis, some insects go through complete metamorphosis. Lepidopterans are one. They'll become a butterfly or a moth. Hymenoptera, like bees and ants, will become, um, will go through a complete metamorphosis from maggots or, or larvae, depending on whether we're talking about flies or um, whatnot. And then they will form wings. But some insects don't go through complete metamorphosis. A good example of this is cockroaches. They'll be kind of like a, a shrunken little cockroach and this gets bigger. But this particular species goes through complete metamorphosis. Again, this is the anal clasp down here. As I mentioned before, you see the spiracles and the mandibles. Um, the spinneret, you can't really see it very well, um, but it's kind of right underneath the mouth. It'll be almost like a little cone shape, but not where my nail was pointing. Silk can come from that. Now there's silk moths or silk worms that can lay real silk that we'll wear, but these caterpillars can also lay it down as silk. When they're small, they can actually use it for ballooning and helping to go from one direction and float to another, or to cover themselves up depending on the species of caterpillars. After they go through this complete metamorphosis, again, this is usually over weeks of time, not a lot of weeks. We might have two or three complete metamorphosis in our neck of the woods of the Midwest. Um, and then they will become a totally, practically what appear like a totally different animal. You know, it'll be a winged animal that can fly. So what's the advantage of it? They can take advantage of different types of food. So they can live in a chewing insect and then go to a nectar drinking insect like a butterfly or a moth. And again, these moths actually kind of are like some of the best flyers in the insect world, very fast moths with a very long proboscis that allows them to drink nectar out of a flower. So here you can see a butterfly, which again, this will become a moth. There, there are differences between them, but the, they will have four wings. Lepidopterans have four wings. Compound eyes, the eyes will be much different than what you see in this caterpillar. And of course the proboscis that allows them to drink nectar and lay eggs and make more baby caterpillars, that's their mission. You can see the wings are on the thorax as well as the legs. And then the abdomen is where digestion takes place. Each one of these areas that you see a spiracle and a, and a separate leg, those are all body segments. So these are all different segments. You can see a crease for each one of them. So that's the gist of the outside of the caterpillar. Again, they have cuticle, it's not skin, even though it's skin-like. They basically have the muscles on their outside of their body. They're cold-blooded animals, so they're very dependent on temperature to move around. If it's really cold, they're not going to move around. For instance, they're not, you know, um, they need the sun and warmth to, to grow, so to speak. Um, so that's kind of the gist of these caterpillars externally. Let me pause. All right. So now I want to show you. Um, this caterpillar here, and um, compare this caterpillar to this one that's on the screen. 
if you look at the one on the screen, you can see that this actually is a translucent caterpillar. You can actually see through the skin. Um, and so this, think of it just like this caterpillar, but now you can see through the skin. So those, these little black dots were the spiracles. Now you can see the spiracles on the screen as um, these white spots. So these spiracles are white spots on this caterpillar. And you'll see that they lead to these small air tubes called trachea. And these trachea lead to even smaller tubes called tracheoles. And that will provide the oxygen directly to the tissues that need them, whether it be muscle tissues or the digestive system and so forth. The carbon dioxide that's built up that from the caterpillar's metabolism will go out those air tubes again through diffusion. So infusion from the air. So they don't have lungs or even really blood cells like we have. They have some blood cells, but they don't have hemoglobin and stuff like that. So look at the, check out this caterpillar here. You can see the, the mid guts moving, the digestive system's moving, and it's actually moving the air tubes around, these trachea and tracheoles. But the, basically it's a tube inside this caterpillar from mouth to anus. It's just a tube within a tube feeding. But look at the trachea moving around in the tracheoles. So that's really cool to be able to see inside this caterpillar. And then you can see the head up here and so forth. So that's really cool. And here's some, some true legs. Here's the fore gut. That would be the front part. The mid gut, gut would be in the middle. And then the hind gut would be at the end. And you can see the air tubes. Again, those are tracheas leading the tracheals coming off the spiracles. Let me pause it again. Okay, so here is the caterpillar again, um, feeding. This is the head up here. Um, you'll, the brain would be here. And then the nervous system is actually on the ventral side. So that'll be the stomach and chest side on us. So remember, our nerves are on the back of us. It goes through the brain, through the spinal cord. That's our central nervous system. Their nervous system or central nervous system goes from their head down the ventral side of their body. What, is, what makes up their heart is actually on the back side of their body. But it's not gonna be like a heart like ours, which is a very defined structure. It's more like a muscular tube that will pump blood around. It's called the uh, dorsal blood vessel. So it's kind of like a heart. Um, and they have a hemocell, so they, they're just a sack of the digestive tissues and a sack of blood. That's the hemocell. You know, they're not going to have they're going to have what you call an open circulatory system. Remember, so they're not going to have blood vessels or anything like that. The digestive system goes from the mouth to the hindgut. The front part of it is called uh, the pro, um, the crop or the pro gut or foregut is what I would call it. No real digestion. I mean, there might be some digestion taking place, but there's no real absorption of food there. Then that will lead into the midgut. There's a little bit of a valve there called a stomatial valve. And then that will lead to the midgut. That's where the food absorption takes place in the midgut. So it's kind of like our stomach. Well, and particularly more like our small intestine. That's where most of the real food absorption takes place. And then um, it'll lead to the hind gut, where it's mostly just water absorption taking place and in the, in the fastest form, the poop. Um, also running around him here is a bunch of little tubes. It'll be connected to the, um, between the mid gut and the hind gut. So this is the mid gut here, this is the fore gut. So there'll be some tubes attached and there'll be lots more than what's shown in this picture and they're, and they're whitish tubes called the Malpighian tubules. Um, um, Malpighii um, is this Italian this scientist that described them. And it filters the blood, kind of like your kidneys. So it functions like kidneys, where it'll get rid of waste particles that the caterpillar doesn't want, or nitrogenous waste, like through the breakdown of proteins. And then that uh, material, um, usually in the form of uric acid, 
will be put into this, will be filtered from the hemocell, the, the open circulatory system, and put into the small intestines where the frass and the uric acid from the urine, the um, P that was formed by the malpigment tubules, will then enter into the intestine and leave as frass. Um, the salivary glands are huge. They'll actually lead from their mouth and will float around in their body and can lead all the way down to the last abdominal segment. There's several segments, about eight of them, and three thoracic segments. So the three thoracic segments are here. Each one will have a leg, and then when it becomes a moth, each of the last two segments will have wings. So it's, um, and so that's the main things about that. Um, that you need to know. Um, again, the salivary gland is going to be important for spit and for silk. Let's see if there's anything else I want to point out about this. Um, oh. The, um, going back to the thorax, there's three segments that make up the the thorax, three segments to make up the thorax. The very front one is called the um, prothorax. The middle one is called the, the mesothorax, and the last one is called the metathorax. And you can see the legs are attached to them. And then the wings would come off the meta or the meso and meta if it, it's a winged animal. And then there's about eight to 10 segments or so for the anus or the abdominal segment. Um, they're on the pro legs, there's, that helps in the grasp, you'll see crochets. So that helps them to hold on. And then of course there's the anal pro legs down there. So that's kind of the gist of what I wanted you to get from the anatomy of the caterpillar. Um, as you know, I posted a video showing you a little bit of the internal anatomy. Um, the other thing that I didn't mention um, located in the body is there's fat body, is the white tissue that functions like the liver. So the malpigian tubules function as kidneys, and the fat body functions a bit like the liver. So those are the main things I wanted you to get from the anatomy of the caterpillar. So you can kind of think of caterpillars as inside out and upside down in comparison to us. Their skeleton or their exoskeleton is on the outside of their body. They don't have an internal, they don't have an internal skeleton like us. So that's why they're inside out compared to us. The muscles attach internally to their exoskeleton. They use hydraulics to pump water and fluids around to help move also. And they're upside down because their nerves are on the front side while our nerves are on our back side. So I think that's kind of interesting too. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed learning a little bit about the Manduca sexta caterpillar. Again, this summer, look, if you grow some tomato plants, enough tomato plants, you'll come across these caterpillars. Again, beautiful spongin moths that come out of it. They're basically also called hawk moths. Take care.